I've got a game behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but Shredder's Re-Revenge, the ROM hack for Sega Genesis. Let me tell you, man. If you want the ultimate Streets of Rage 2 experience, you've got to play. The, it, they did a wonderful job on this. I assume that the, I should check the ROM file size. I assume that it's like much larger than your average cartridge size. And that's what, how they're able to achieve it. But it's got like basically the full suite of animation from Shredder's Revenge, the new TMNT game. So what they did was they took Streets of Rage 2 and they put all of those sprites with all of their animations from Shredder's Revenge into Streets of Rage 2. They didn't swap out the music. They really need to. Because yeah. it, 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 the... <laughs> just isn't doing it for me oh with God. TMNT. But like, um, it's really... It's really quite awesome and and you can run which you couldn't i don't think you could do in streets of rage 2 so you can get around the stage much faster you got, you can play as casey jones april or uh, splinter as well as the four turtles um i feel like the because you have such a large move set it's a little bit easier than streets of rage 2 like you have like a, a real shot at finishing the game um i i can't recommend it enough if you're like a sega genesis fan especially if you have a mega drive and a sweet little nine inch crt television like i do <laughs> I very much uh, uh, recommend. Yeah, you know, I, I think ROM hacks on EverDrive is 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 a is a lovely idea. Well, I think I think the the Mega EverDrive Pro is just amazing. And I was playing just vanilla Streets of Rage two, and it's just such a just the the base bones of Streets of Rage two is just beautiful. That's why what I get a great ROM so often. What a great yeah, and why that's why like probably the Beats of Rage and all that stuff uh, yeah. project exists because of this game. I think it's just such a top tier beat 'em up. And I'm not even a big fan of beat 'em ups, but sometimes like I don't know if somebody's droning on at a meeting, I'll turn on my seat CRT and I'll just <laughs> just beat up some guys in Streets of Rage. And yeah, I, I got the Mega the Mega EverDrive Pro as well. And yeah, so just for those who are into that kind of thing Remember, you can play Sega CD right off of a Genesis. Is it only off the Model 2 that you can do the Sega CD? I think it's off of any. I, you just can't have the you can't even you can't have the Sega CD attached, right? For some reason, you but you can just play it with your your regular Sega Genesis. But to me, that's even better because having the Sega CD attached um, means that you would have to yeah that big power brick and stuff. But you can play Sega CD, you can play Master System. Uh, I noticed Game Gear, Game Gear doesn't work properly. Um, it tries, but it can't really do it. Yeah. Um, it can play some NES games, which I've yeah, done. Yeah, inter- I haven't tried that yet. But it's just, ha- you know... And Genesis games have save states, which is awesome. Sega, oh. is, just, Sega is just so lovely. Yeah. There's and, a lot and, of really, really good games on Genesis. Yeah, and for me, yeah, like I, we had a Sega Genesis growing up, but it was like my sisters, and I was like a Nintendo, Nintendo boy. And so I, I kind of like didn't want to play with it. I didn't want to see it. Mm-hmm. And so, but as an adult, going back and being like, "Oh, this is this is stuff that I liked from my childhood," but like, and there's a good library of games I haven't played yet with great graphics. Uh, I like that the sound kind of is grungy and sounds like farts. I love it. You ever uh, play <laughs> X Men: The Clone Wars? No, I haven't. No, I'll oh, put dude. that. I'll dude. put that on my list. X. Please play that oh, for me for oh, Francis. Wars. X Men Clone Wars. Yeah, that's the second one. Um, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> you fought the Clone Wars. <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's a. Uh, the graphics are amazing. The gameplay is amazing. It's a little hard, but uh, you can play as a lot of X Men. Um, they in every X Men game before that, using your mutant powers, um, like came at a price. You had to, you know, have mutant power saved up or something. And this thing, you just whip out your claws. You do whatever the fuck you want. You, if nice. you're Gambit, you throw your cards. You, it's just so good. It, it, it's, it's really in much the way that, you know, like how Contra hardcore, like difficulty aside, the, the graphics are just such a demonstration of the Sega Genesis. I, I think X-Men is like that too. Yeah. For license but, game. Um, and I, I picked up the 8 Do 2.4 controller for the you can plug into the Genesis. Oh, you found one? I found one. They're, they 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 don't sell them anymore right now. They're out of stock everywhere everywhere. And they're on eBay. Sometimes they're like hundreds of dollars. Whoa. But I, I found a listing where they they listed the item wrong. <laughs> and they they said it was for the Genesis Mini, but I I could tell that it was not. And so I I made an offer for like 40 bucks and I got it. 
Yeah. So I got it. So it was a, it was a good find, and it's perfect condition, and it plays awesome. I love those eight bit Doe controllers. So now I have the eight bit Doe controllers for the original NES, Super Nintendo, and uh, Sega Genesis, and it's great because I, I do not like wires because I'm very fidgety in my seat while I'm mm. playing. You know, I'm doing that. I don't want to trip up on wires. So. No, that makes sense. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do people complain about the Sega Genesis D-pad? Um, I don't know. I, I, since I, I have been – before I got that 8-bit do, do controller, I've been using the big chunky three-button one. Yeah, um, me too. I don't think I've had issues. I, 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 thought, I thought I remember people complaining about that controller, but I've been playing with it a lot lately, and I – I actually think the D pad feels awesome. I don't I'm like really into yeah, that. I've, that particular I've had no D-pad. problems. I've had I mean, no problems. I don't, I don't think I like love it, but I, I think every game, like I, and I, I played through street fighter and I did all the combo moves where you have to do those like half circles and shit. Yeah. I thought it would have played fine. I love, I love actually the Genesis version of uh, street fighter Two champion edition, special champion edition. I thought, I think that's a fun, that's a very fun version. It's probably I my favorite the, version of street fighter. I bought uh, from Retrobit. They they sell like first party controllers for so th- like they're a re- you know they they they'll sell you a six button Sega Genesis controller brand new. Mm-hmm. I bought one for like sixteen dollars, and it definitely for is it, certainly is it for, wired, wired yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like it's the it's the original style. Um, it's quite it's nice. I'm not like quite. I mean, people are pretty in love with it. I mean, yeah, it, it like um, it changes Mortal Kombat for sure. Like it makes it more you know you don't have to do like two button combos for uppercuts and stuff and that that's quite nice but i think if i had my druthers uh the three button is what i would stick with i I, i'll admit that the the way your hand uh you know contours with it isn't quite ideal but um i don't know i think it's a it's a good little controller but i do like the the eight bit doe genesis one just because i I like the like the heft Mm. of it like it's got a good heft to size ratio for my hands. I've, oh, yeah. I've, I've fairly small hands, so I, it, yeah, it seems to work, work for me. Um, and I've been playing a lot of crusaders of Senti, which is like is a Sega, Sega Genesis. And it's, um, it's, it's like a link to the past ripoff. It, it like very much a link to the past ripoff. Like he's sw- like, you're a little character, a little boy, and he swings his sword in the same exact way as link. Except, except in this one, you get like little an- animal friends that give you powers um, that you collect through the course of the story. Um, I did have to sort of play it with a game facts because sometimes, like, it's it's not that I get stuck very long, but I don't want to get stuck at all because I only have so much game time. <laughs> it so, looks it, it, the graphics look lovely. Yeah, it, it's it's you know it it plays like a clone of. Uh, link to the past and sometimes you can it doesn't like quite nail that feeling but um but it's great if you want a, a genesis adventure um it, it's got you know the it, you it, like he swings the sword exactly like link and it's you get animal friends um it's not like a a sprawling map like a link to the past you kind of go to different locations and you do it's more like battle focus i would say um, but it's, it's fun. It's a fun little romp and the, the translation is really strange. Like I, it sounds like broken English <laughs> or like not like not the best translation, but it's, it's, it's good. It was, uh, it's a really expensive game if you want to get it legit, but if you have mm-hmm. an EverDrive, you can just play it. D- d- doesn't the EverDrive com- like take all that out of your, out of your mind? Yeah. I went to a retro game store recently and I saw all these like cartridges. I'm like, I don't need to buy any of these. Yeah. I, and I don't want to like the, because the only ones that really have sentimental value to me are the ones from my childhood. And I have those already. Right. And so, um, once I have the access to that on the legitimate hardware to a CRT, like it takes all of that like guilt of not having those cartridges, like you know that weird guilt you might have by looking at them and wanting to buy them. It's gone. We 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 talked uh, <clears throat> a couple episodes ago about. I was saying that if you want to play on original hardware, having an original TV is a good way to. It's in my opinion like an essential way to get the original experience. And somebody was like. You can, or actually, I think multiple people were like, you can enjoy retro games on a modern TV. I said, I didn't say you couldn't. I said that if you do that, you should emulate because there's no point in going and doing backflips to make this original hunk of junk 
I mean, unless you're just a hobbyist and you just like plugging yeah. things into things. I, I, th- I think there's a little bit of a, a fun in it. Um, like, oh, yeah. I want my I want my console to have sex with my new TV. And yeah, you do money. it. I hate money. <laughs> I, I, I hate money. I want to spend it. I want to like tinker around with cables and uh, solder on some chips. Yeah, people like, I mean, I'm not going to yuck your yum. That's fun. I've done it. And I'm probably going to do it again. <laughs> um, so I'm are, not gonna... are you getting to the point where there's like no square inch of your house where you couldn't just turn and there'd be a retro game? I live, definitely the basement. The basement is yeah. – uh, which is – the why I'm not in the ba- basement right now is it, it's been flooding and the sump pump is going constantly. It's you know really what? Loud. You know what's funny about that? Mm-hmm. Same here. I'm looking at uh, – I had to pull all this shit away from the wall, including the Xbox and all the rest of it. Luckily, you know, of course, the arcades are up on risers, but yeah, we have the same problem. We got we got some water down here. Yeah, I mean, luckily, nothing was damaged for me. No arcades were were soaked with water, but um, yeah, it's just it's been really wet lately, and uh, been <laughs> raining, and um, so yeah, my sump pump is really loud. So it's it, it, like if the sump pump's not running, there's gonna it, I can't be like the hunt household where I let water come in and out like the tides. <laughs> To, to ruin my fester's quest <laughs> i can't do it um i have to have a dry basement um so fester's quest <laughs> standing in a pool in basement drown in the basement it's he, like he the, talks with about this... it so shamelessly like of course like yeah that's what happened <laughs> it's like the scavenger john where keith tries to go to the basement he's like oh shit never mind <laughs> never mind <laughs> i, I uh, was watching a you know how you don't watch metal jesus mm-hmm uh, video, retro video game uh, YouTuber. He he did an episode recently on a Chinese emulator system, like a Super Console X, but not the Super Console X. It was some other thing that was modeled after the Famicom. And it was like he was new to the planet Earth. <laughs> he, he was talking about this thing like, like it was 2011, where he was like, so guys... It comes with pirated games. Not sure how that's legal. I'm like, yeah, well, they do that, don't they? And, <laughs> they a lot of them do that. Yeah, Every I single think, like Amazon list. And then he's like, and, you know, I'd say all of the re- the 8-bit and 16-bit games actually look pretty good. They actually emulate pretty good, feel pretty good on this system. But... <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, he has to come to every video like a child, like a newborn baby. Yeah, he's like, gonna be born again. The Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, it is not playing correctly. <laughs> it is just, I mean, look at this emulation. It's terrible. I'm like, yeah, of course it is. It's always terrible. What do you? Why, what are you new? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was just sitting there. Like he's like, I actually emailed the Chinese seller and said, "Are you? Are these games licensed?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like are you fucking serious it's like like talking to a scam artist like in the middle of like uh, central park and like <laughs> are these drugs legal <laughs> are you actually selling these dvds legitimately <laughs> <laughs> this pornography <laughs> this pornography I, I uh i i think i heard somewhere i think it's true that it actually is not illegal to buy it it oh. must be true, but it's illegal to sell it, of course, yeah, the, yeah. The, much like some drug laws, but with uh, uh, ROMs, that is. Yeah. I saw some eBay listings of mm-hmm. um, modded consoles that have like SD cards in them. And it was like, I just want to tell you that I am like, this listing does not condone putting ROMs on this SD card that I will be providing you. You will have to provide your own like homebrew games or something. <laughs> like definitely all homebrew games on the SD card. Got it. <laughs> definitely not going to put a bunch of ROMs that I can easily download from archive.org. Yeah, legally. <laughs> That's the um, thing. It's like ROMs are obtainable legally. That's the you know, it, so it yeah, if they're if if me downloading it and putting it on the Mega Drive if not, if from archive.org where it was legal to upload it. Like at what point? What in that is it illegal? Um, I don't know. Just in your conscience, man. Where I <laughs> is it, if I if I can't if I couldn't provide evidence that I have that this was a backup of a game that I owned. Uh, yeah, even that. Uh, like, I don't know. Even that's supposed to be shady. You're not. Yeah. I don't even think you're supposed to have backups. Uh, that that excuse is early internet fables. Yeah, um, they would always have that. It's like you can only download these as backups to the games you have. Right. I think that's actually BS. But um, <laughs> the other thing I, I found, uh, there's a retro game store in a mall near me called uh, uh, 
a state is a state line. It's like state line gaming or something. Um, it's a, it's a retro game store. They used to have a huge, uh, a huge store in, in the mall, but they state got kicked out. Games. Yeah. State line games. And they got, they got kicked out of their real estate and they're in a smaller, like really small real estate, they're but they've cool. used, yeah, in Holyoke. They use that real estate so well, though. Mm. Like, they, they, it's like wall to wall games, beautiful, um, uh, just like packed in there. And so you, you can look around there and, and see like a million. Per- it's like one of those things they have such good selection of retro games. You're like, did you, did you make a, a deal with some, some, some demon to get these games? <laughs> because there's just like so many good ones. And, um, what's up with that? And I was I was looking specifically because um, a uh, friend of the pod Dan who was on the pod last time, yep. he's he's looking to mod a uh, PlayStation with a S the one of those SD card uh, chips so you can play games off of an SD card not unlike an EverDrive. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if they have <clears throat> a PlayStation. Well, they had a PlayStation behind glass that was eighty dollars. And it says working condition. I was like, oh, maybe, I don't know, $80, that's a bit much. And then I saw they had a pile of as is, as is. And they had a, um, they had a PlayStation, no cables, no nothing. And it had a sticker that said Crime Killer, which is an interplay game. There's a sticker way on, like on top of it. It's really ugly. And I was like, oh, I wonder if this works. I sh- I shook it. It has a rattly sound in it. I was like, ah, eh, whatever. I'm, I'm just gonna. It was twenty five bucks as is, and I just bought it. I was like, whatever. And they also had, um, for the Wii, they had the the perfect shot. It's a it's a oh, gun yeah. hol- as a gun holster for your Wiimote to totally make it into it. like a gun a little light gun, and I, I have a um, a modded Wii downstairs that has you know the House of the Dead games on it, and I was like, oh that might be fun to play like sit on the the futon and play House oh, of totally. the Dead, Dead with that gun. Uh, so so I, it was for a buck as is, and it, it was looked perfectly fine. So I was like twenty six bucks, I can come out of here with a PlayStation and a thing. So I, I bring it back. I found some cables that would work for the PlayStation. And um, I plugged it in. I put in a game, and it didn't work at first. I was like, oh, maybe the CD drive's broken. And then I looked at the CD I put in there, and there was like <laughs> – it looked like like I might have like spilt like Coke on it or something because like, it was wow. like sticky all over the disc. I was like, okay. So I, I tried another disc, Mega Man X or something, and it, it worked perfectly. I was like, oh, sweet. And uh, it like everything – the <clears throat> not, nothing – no, no problems. It ran a little hot, so I might have to replace the, the power supply. Um, but uh, so maybe, yeah, I was thinking maybe I'll do a video about modding it, just like Dan. I'll steal his idea, and we can have competing <laughs> modding videos. <laughs> um, oh, so is, is he definitely? Well, I sh- is he going to be doing a modding video? I think so. But yeah, yeah and then I'm, I just totally am going to steal his idea, and I'm going to make my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked. We did dueling arcade videos, you know, that yeah, works. You know, I don't know. It's just, uh, there is something fun about modding the console because I, I do want to have the play because the PlayStation, a lot of games, especially like those Mega Man X games and yeah. Castlevania, it's like, it's like Super Nintendo Plus. It's so good. And it's, it looks amazing on my CRT with the, uh, I had a, I had a SCART cable for it and I put it in and the colors, oh, it pops. And it's it's got the it's got the but it's got the smooth retro feeling of it. Mm. Yeah, mm. I I don't have the SCART cable thing, but my um, my little CRT only has RF for for uh, input, and the Sega Genesis that I had, I only had an RF out, and I was like, you know what, like fuzzy is okay, you know, I I, I, I low resolution is okay. You're kind of going for low resolution with a little TV. But like scan lines, fuzzy bullshit. If it feels like it's an unstable unst- uh, connection, I was like, I think I think I'm gonna need a, a composite. And I was like, can I? Is there such a thing as composite for the Genesis? And sure enough, you linked me to the Retrobit one. I also got an RF modulator. I haven't thought about the words RF modulator in about 25 years. And uh, uh, yeah, one extension to another. It looks lovely now. And oh, it really makes all the difference for like that Sega CD stuff. There's a, um, if you want an on rail space shooter, like a star Fox for Sega CD, uh, soul star. Um, and it looks lovely, uh, on that, on that screen. 
We're just having a gay old time with our yeah. CRTs. I mean, we just can't stop with this. I, I can't. I'm having fun. And I did play House of the Dead with that perfect shot. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! Because like it's got the the Wii has a really fun vibration. I think um, mm. so. It vibrates throughout the gun, so it's like you're it's like you're killing real zombies <laughs> with a gun. They, they, they released <laughs> House of the Dead for uh, Switch, didn't they? I, yeah, I yeah. played it on Switch. It was I don't know what it is about the um, the Joy Cons, but they're actually their motion control is like way more advanced than the Wii's ever was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can like recalibrate the center of it really easily, and you don't have to be su- there's no sensor to be sensitive about. Yeah, but I, I do think the pointer controls on the Wii are, it's very interesting. I i think I vibe with it really well. Like, I love the games that kind of use the pointer controls mm-hmm. to full capacity where you're pointing at things. Like, some there's some adventure games on there. The shooting games, obviously. Um, there's something about it. It's like, it's so unique to do on a console. It's like you'd normally do that with a mouse and keyboard on a PC. And so it was kind of like a different way to play during that time. What's your favorite virtual con Wii virtual console experience you ever had? If you had to pick one. Hmm. Um, Ninja Gaiden was probably one of them because I didn't really play it in my childhood. So it was like playing a, a, and, and also people weren't playing retro games that much. This was even like because it came out before or around the time <clears throat> like Angry Video Game Nerd was coming out, you know. So people weren't like ruminating on retro games that much. And there was so some was emulation kind of- on PC and that's about it. I mean, yeah. hell, <clears throat> uh, uh, the commodification of emulation really didn't explode until like three years ago. So we virtual consoles the first time. So Ninja Gaiden was like, oh, this is this is fun. I, I, I like played through it. Um, the other thing was even just the release of Super Metroid onto the Wii Virtual Console was kind of an event. And I remember, this was so stupid, but it was during college. I uh, I was so excited to get Super Metroid on the Wii for some reason. I don't know why. but um, And so I emailed all of my friends in college. I'm like, I'm going to buy um, a handle of Jack Daniels and uh, Super Metroid for the Wii Virtual Console, and you are all invited to my party. It's called Super Fucking Metroid, and you're going to come <laughs> over and you're going to watch me drink this Jack, this bottle of Jack Daniels while I play uh, I Super Metroid. And people did. A lot of people came over. I didn't you know expect. I expected they showed up. <laughs> they showed up and they had a great time, or at least I think they did. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention, but I, I remember. <laughs> I remember, like, yeah, playing through it. I remember getting, like, really, really, like, blackout almost drunk at um, Ridley. And I was like, people were like, are you okay? Can you finish the game? I'm like, no, I got it. And I did. I went, I went to Mother Brain. I beat her. And I was just like, and then after I beat the game, I'm like, okay, everybody, you can leave. <laughs> that, that, that's to- basically your favorite video game of all time, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> <Super> absolutely. <throat> yeah. So that was my favorite experience with Virtual Console. But there was other like games that were interesting. Like um, it was the first time I played Rondo of Blood because they released that for the Virtual Console, which was strange. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, Sin and Punishment, which was a Japan only N64 game by Treasure, the same people who did Gunstar Heroes. They did, yep. they, that was released. That's kind of amazing. It's a uh, region blocked. And I think the success of the virtual console version of that game, they made a sequel on the Wii, I think. Sin and Punishment for the Wii. I think it was the Wii. It just based on the sales of the virtual console game. So it must have sold well. I kind of wish they still had the virtual console. I love, I mean, you know, the, the, the system where you buy, you have a big wall of games that you can play. It's fine. But I kind of wish you could own some of these games. Like what if I don't want to <laughs> pay, go to the system because they're, they just, they're releasing golden eye tomorrow. And you maybe well, I just really want to play golden eye. <laughs> I, I, you know, look, if, if Nintendo wants to do that with its first party games, because it can fine. But the but the Nintendo store, Nintendo, you know, should like we should get rid of this virtual console concept and just like the, the Nintendo store should have all of that stuff. Yeah, or if yeah, for if companies don't want to do a deal with Nintendo, maybe you could buy like a Ninten- like some other game that is from a third party, and then you could like import it into that same interface, you know, the with of uh, the NES or the Super. Like Nintendo. I, I ought to be able to buy 
retro licensed games off of that g game store. Konami will should sell me Tiny Toons if I want it. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.